What's good, Tiger Nation? Y'all know who it is. This your main man, Ken Clark. And we sitting down with a with a legend. <laughs> Y'all know who it is, man. We got James Houston in the building. Detroit Lions rookie sensation, former JSU football Tiger uh, sensation. Man, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. What's yes, good, baby? Yes, sir. What's good? What's, how you feeling? Doing good, man. Just a uh, great weekend. Wanted uh, We run across you, and I'm like, bro, we got to sit down with you. Plus, I was in his inbox. It's all good. I, I, I appreciate you uh, for, for giving us a chance to talk to you. How's everything going with you, though? Great, man. Um, just finished up my rookie season. Um, just back home, you know, out in L.A., checking out, you know, yeah. Zay, seeing what he's doing at the NFLPA game. But, uh, no, nah, I'm just relaxing, man, uh, spending time with my family and just uh, – you know, waiting, waiting to get back to work. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, like you talked about your rookie year. I mean, we, what a roller coaster ride, man. I want you to do this for, for those that will be tuned in to watch you and watch this interview. Speak to us about your, um, oh yeah, you, you, he busy, busy man. So, you know, don't worry about that. Don't even cut that out. <laughs> but anyway, um, talk to us about just the journey from the, from the draft all the way up into uh, making the final, like getting to final cut day, getting cut, then coming back on the practice squad, then having to work. You know what I'm saying? Like just expand on that for those that don't really understand the process. Yeah, uh, like you said, it was a roller coaster ride, man. Um, I mean, I could even take it back further to, you know, just leaving Jackson or like the last game, you know, the Celebration Bowl, you know, thinking we going to close it out with a, with a good dub, you know, finish out the year, Sean, we lose, you know, and that was disheartening you know uh, mm -hmm. wanted to finish it out strong especially for Jackson State um, but then you know having to train and stuff hearing hearing stuff from everybody the scouts and hearing you know undrafted yeah. and so I'm just like man like undrafted like I just went and got 21 sacks you know what I'm saying like that don't and so it was just like it was disheartening and I, I realized you know like I, I gotta work harder you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying they don't see what I showed so I gotta show them something else and so um going to that and then that's why I made the decision you know to come to the NFL PA bowl game okay. and also do the East West Shrine game you know because I knew I needed those looks I knew they they didn't see whatever you know I put on tape and mm -hmm. so uh, I needed to put more on tape and so um, going to that did, did pretty well in that so went back up confidence kind of back up um, leaving after that you know not getting the combine invite you right. know snubbed me for that and now I'm like dang man that's another thing you know and then uh the next thing, going up to train and stuff for the pro day, had a good pro day, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So now I'm back up, back up, waiting, for, waiting around for the draft. Um, those first two days were a little tough, you know, and then that yeah. third day sitting around and waiting, yeah. just a little scary, you know, you don't know, you don't know where you're going to lie. Um, but I had kind of come to terms that um, I was a ball player and wherever I went or if I didn't go, I was going to be fine and I was going to be straight. Um, so eventually, you know, Detroit picked me up and I was just, ecstatic just happy to, that somebody wanted me you know right, right. and uh that's really what i thought you know and so going up to camp you know started that linebacker switched my position to dn uh not really seeing the field too much in the preseason and mm -hmm. um that was tough you know i was that was real tough um and then getting cut so now i'm real real low you know yeah. real low and just like not really knowing what direction to go in um you know, I never been cut from nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it was it was just real tough. It was tough. Um, and then sitting on the practice squad for six or twelve weeks, really, wow. um, twelve weeks, sitting on the practice squad, just trying to learn and grow. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of went into a mindset of just grind. You know, just grind and uh, show them that you grinding. You know, so they don't they don't they don't feel like you not in it or you not with the team. So. I was just grinding and uh, just trying to get better going against, you know, some of the best tackles in the NFL and uh, every day and just getting better, sharpening my tools, sharpening my tools. And uh, eventually, you know, some of the coaches, they took notice to it and they started talking to me, coming up to me around about week six, telling me, hey, we see you out there. You working, man. Don't think we don't see you. Uh, we see you keep going. Uh, about week seven, now they like, OK, we, we, we looking to get you up, man. Yeah. We, we feel like you could do a little something. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready. Like. I'm ready, so I'm just staying focused, continue to grind. But you know that went on for a whole another six weeks. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> and so it was just that was disheartening as well. Just like man, like why they keep telling me I'm finna be up and I ain't even yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it was like man, like it was just real tough. And uh, eventually I told the coach like, hey, if you ain't gonna bring me up, don't tell me. Just whenever it happens, just I'm gonna be ready. I'm ready. Right. Like you know what I'm saying. You don't gotta keep checking on me. 
And uh, sure enough, that next week, it came out. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? That was just yeah. blessing. Like, yeah. you give me my opportunity on Thanksgiving, bro. And I had no idea I was even going to play. Like, yeah. literally, I bought my ticket back home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For after the game. Like, wow. And uh, so they brought me back. They brought me up. And um, I was just talking to, you know, a lot of my linebackers, the linebackers in the D-line and some of the vets and stuff. And they were just telling me, like, this your opportunity, man. Like, we see what you've been doing in practice, but you got to show them in that game. Like, mm -hmm. you got to show them that you can do it in this league. Like, you got to prove it to them. And uh, this is really going to be in one shot. Like, you may not get another one. And so that just... Most people will probably get anxiety from that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That just gave me more motivation. You know, I was like, okay, this is it. Like, if I got to prepare for a big test, you know, this, this is going to be it. And mm -hmm. I, I got to ace it. And so uh, went out there and I did my thing, man. I really did. I did my thing. Five two plays, sacks, two sacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. Sacks. Hey, it was, uh, it was fun watching you, man. We went crazy, man. We went crazy, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm with the family. I'm eating Thanksgiving dinner, man, and I'm like, man, James Houston, and everybody like, everybody trying to figure out why I'm going crazy. And then we go to Twitter because you know our Jackson State social media, man. We 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 do what we do. Shout out to Tiger Nation, right? But I do want to do this. I appreciate you giving us kind of a peep under the tent. One question that came to mind when you were saying this was, how did like, did they call you in the office to let you know you was coming up? Yeah, so, because nah. the reason why I asked that because I'm saying like. Obviously, we don't, you know, I know you guys had hard knocks and, and everything and all the cameras there. And um, like when they bring you into the office and say, hey, we're going to we're going to cut you. But then they're going to we're going to bring you back to the practice squad. Mm -hmm. Expand on us on like how that conversation went when they were talking to you saying we're going to bring you up. Yeah. OK, so like during the hard knock stuff, I'm sure y'all saw it. You know, they call you to the office and. It's, you know, they got this sad face on. It's like, yeah, we don't really want to. But, you know, yeah. it's a business. They got to do it. You know what right. I'm saying? And my whole thing was just like, was it something I did or something that I didn't do? Just let me know what it is so I can fix it. Mm -hmm. That was really my whole thing. Like, mm -hmm. And obviously, I was hurt because, you know, you, you drafted me and then you cut me. I was the only drafted guy to get cut. Uh, you know right. what I'm saying? So I'm looking at everybody, all, the, all my dudes that came in with me like, dang, like, I didn't think that was going to happen. It's like. You got to eat it, take it to the chest, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that was tough. But um, so, yeah, them calling me into the practice squad, calling me up from the practice squad. Um, it was really funny. So really, we, Tuesdays is the off days, Wednesday, Thursday, really the hard days. Okay. Um, okay. And so uh, I went through the Wednesday practice and um, it was nothing. They didn't tell me nothing, you know, because I told them, don't don't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I ain't coming up, don't tell me nothing. So they ain't say nothing on Wednesday. Thursday come up, I, I assume they just, they made their decisions, you know, in the front office, they got to figure out who finna be up, what's finna work, who's out. Right. So I'm um, assuming they made their decisions. Um, we had a little time off in the morning, so I was up, I was eating some breakfast, and uh, my LB coach called me Coach Shell. Yeah. And uh, he just had the biggest smile on his face. He don't never really, you know, FaceTime me. He called me on the phone, he's like, okay. he said, problem, you ready to sack Josh Allen? I said, what? Ooh. I said, oh yeah. I said, let's go. I said, I'm ready. Yeah. He said, ah, he said, let's go, man. He said, we're going to need you this week. He said, it's going to be a big game. And uh, he was just like, you ready, man? Like, come in the building, like, to, to let's go over some stuff. I said, all right, bet. Like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to get ready right now. And I yeah. headed right to the facility, uh, got on some of the plays, and um, yeah. they was just grooming me. That was really third down day. So, like, that was really my day to, to go out there and show them what I had. And um, I feel like I gave them that confidence on, on uh, Thursday. To, that they could put me in the game, and uh, you know I would I would do what I needed to do. That's awesome, man. So from that game, from Thanksgiving, now you 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 you, you uniformed up for the rest of the season, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was it? Seven games, eight sacks. Do you think about man? Boy, if I only could have got them other games. How many sacks you think I? You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you had a phenomenal year. I mean, even up for you know really rookie of the year type conversations and we I mean we beyond proud of you brother and uh, we be we're so proud of you that it's been some ongoing online spats on who get to claim the credit right is it Florida is it is it is it JSU I, t I said you know James is a gator tiger lion right 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 <laughs> exactly I man. got it that way we all can right. you know because we all want to uh, celebrate you mm -hmm. but talk about your, your, your the rest of the season you know what I'm saying like how do you feel about what you were able to accomplish and kind of like What's next? Because that's always the next question, you know, like you had a big year. All right, now what? How do you build? Yeah. 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 So um, 
I still haven't really taken it yeah. that whole because what I did was it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, it was historic. It was yes. you know it was just astonishing. And yeah. um, every week I just kind of like put it in the back of my head so I can just continue to mm. you know grow and not dwell on what I was doing. And um, sitting back after it's like okay you did that that week that week that week you know what i'm saying it was yeah. like wow okay cool and um i was just real proud of myself like you said i was proud of myself and um what's next for me i just want to continue to build mm -hmm. i want to continue to build um i want to go out go after that 20 sacks you know what i'm saying i want to be a leader le leading leader uh, of sacks in the nfl that's my goal i want to be the best player in the nfl you know what i'm saying like I'm always trying to be better than what I am. I'm never trying to stay where I'm at. And um, for me to do, get eight sacks in, in seven games, I know they projected or whatever, that, that should be like 20 sacks. Yeah. And um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm counting on. That's what I'm banking on. That's in the back of my head. So uh, going into next year, I got high hopes. I got high goals. And um, I'm not going to let nobody, you know, defer me or tell me you only third down, so you can't do this, yeah, or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, like, I know what I can do on that field, you know what I'm saying, so. Yeah, so, no, so, so let me ask you this then. When you started, so you get into, like, game three, yep. and you rolling, and now that James Houston coming to the game, you gotta watch out for number 59. Did the team start, like, game planning for you? Like, oh yeah, for sure. What'd um, that look like? So yeah. basically, that's what my D-line coach was telling me, like, cause some of the stuff I was doing, it was I was really just using a lot of speed and mm. just dipping. And he was kind of telling me like, ah, that might not last, you know, because okay. people are gonna start game planning you, like you, you, you making a lot of plays, like they gonna start really looking at you and trying to figure out how to block you. And I was like, I, I really, I understand you coach, but um, I've been doing this for, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks on practice squad, you know what I'm saying? And they haven't been able to stop me. And I understand the game plan is different when they actually are attacking you. Right. Um, but I mean, it was just like, bro, I'm gonna I'm give. I'm gonna take whatever you give me. <laughs> if it's one on one, I expect to win. Right, if it's right. two on one, I'm gonna still try to win. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, I'm out there playing. I don't really care if you game planning me or not. I'm out there trying to get to the ball. Yeah. And so um, it was a little bit harder, you know. Um, and then when my role increased as well, you know, being in different situations and mm -hmm. them actually having more of a game plan to attack me on, it was a little different. But um, it's football, man. You know what I'm saying? I got game planned at Jackson. There you go. <laughs> So going into your sophomore year, I mean, do you see your role expanding more? I know you mentioned you was kind of more third down, and then we did we did see you play a lot more. I mean, heck of a year for the for the uh, Detroit Lions to finish what nine and seven. Yep. I mean, you were right there in playoff hunt. I enjoyed it, man, seeing you guys whip the Packers, you know, and and <laughs> you know, but uh, seeing you guys finish, I mean, a couple of personalities on in that organization that just pop out, you know, what I'm saying the running back Jamal Williams, you got. You got the head coach, Dan Campbell. I wanted to ask about Dan Campbell because he really seemed like, because I was out at the practice, the NFL PA Bowl practice uh, following Zay. Uh, shout out to Zay Bolden uh, for, for doing his thing um, at the game. I'm talking to a scout for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Mm. And he's talking about having covered uh, Detroit. And he mentioned your name and he knew that you played in that game uh, last year. Um, but he wanted, he talked about the difference in the Detroit Lions under coach Matt Patricia and now you got a coach like Dan Campbell from a distance just looks like a player coach yeah. looks like a coach that's fun to play for right. so talk a little bit about you know just how it is to be a part of that organization and then you got uh, Mr. Brad that's the GM mm -hmm. you know North Carolina A&T okay. HBCU uh, uh, ties so speak to a little bit of that and then we'll get back into some of the Jackson State. Yeah a lot of people ask me about that um a lot of people ask me about Prime and just kind of how they're both different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say they're actually a lot similar, even though okay. it's like okay. different sides of the same coin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, two different people, but kind of had the same ideology of how to, how to get through to their players. They're, they're player coaches. They understand that their players need motivation and they need to see that you are strong and you mm. are able to lead them. You know what I'm saying? And you got their back through it all. And uh, I feel like that's what both of them do. That's what both of them do pretty well. Um, they give a lot of motivation and they just allow you to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself, go out there and play and uh, just be a baller. And um, Coach, what I would say about Coach, uh, <laughs> about Coach Campbell, he's a little bit more hard nosed, okay. you know. Uh, he's a little bit rough around the edges. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a big dude, man. I ain't gonna cap my first time meeting him. I was just looking up and I was just like, yeah. 
this is a coach I I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could really say too much to wow. man. He 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 a little intimidating, but um, nah, they're both great guys, man. Um, I actually played with his son in little league. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, wow. my awesome. dad coached them all, and he used to come out when he played for the uh, not play, but when he coached for the Dolphins, he mm-hmm. used to come out and come watch some games and stuff like that. So um, it's kind of crazy how everything is just full yeah, circle like times. that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the GM Brad Holmes, man, mm-hmm. great guy, man, great guy, and uh, I mean, great GM. Yeah. Uh, looking what he did great the last, folks, yeah, man. the last couple years, yeah. man. He's he's been doing his thing. Really, really been doing his thing. Um, he's brought in a lot of young talent. And um, a lot of these young guys are producing at a high level. Mm-hmm. And um, nah, he's a great guy. NC, N- North Carolina A&T. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to the Maggies, yep. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Always comes up to me and chops it up with me about HBCUs and all different types of stuff. So um, nah, great dude. Looking forward to, you know, being in Detroit and hanging out with him for as long as I can. One of the things, uh, I was watching his, his interview um, after the season was over. You know, you guys, like I said, y'all beat the Packers. They, they're asking about you. And one of the players he mentioned that you mirrored a lot like was uh, Robert Quinn. He mentioned him. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because I wanted to ask, like, is there a player, you know, because people don't realize, you know, when you played at, you know, Florida. Mm-hmm. I'm watching you play middle linebacker in the <laughs> SEC championship. Yep. Get eight tackles. Man. You know what I mean? You transfer into Jackson State. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get into it. Don't worry. We're going to get into <laughs> it because we got to go to the infamous – interaction between coach weeks coach prime and now you got the infamous uh position change right, right? Yep. so do you look at those types of players i think you mentioned a quinn uh who's a bit undersized coming off the edge that's i mean a legend in the game right do you is there a particular player that you kind of mirror when you think about how you can continue to improve because now you got it's, it's only up from here now yeah so you got to find a way to get to that next level and do like i said get to that 20 seconds yeah I would say it's tough for me, man. Um, it's always kind of been tough for me to like look at a player and try to do what they do, because I don't. I'm just not like a, a typical player. I don't know. I'm just. I, I don't feel like I do everything everybody else does. I kind of do it my own different way. Um, but I do. I do watch obviously, and like you said, I used to watch my middle linebackers. <laughs> I never watched the ends. You know what I'm saying? I never watched it. Right, right. Um, literally, I, whenever I just had a D-line friend, he would be looking online at D-line stuff. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. You know, but I ain't never really even look yeah, at it. Yeah. It was like, um, my favorite player was um, uh, Patrick Willis. Oh, you know nice. what I'm saying? That was my favorite player. Nice. And so um, that's kind of always what I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, after my positions changed, I kind of was just reaching out for information, trying to figure out how to play the position because I was really just out there just playing. Wow. And so... Um, you know, some of the guys, Coach Trevor, he told me, look at Michael Parsons. You know, that's that's kind of like how you're, yeah, that's kind of how you would translate to the league. Um, and that's kind of the big new thing right now. So, mm-hmm. you know, try to take a look at him. So I looked at him and I like his moves. He's just effort, effort and uh, production. And right. um, that's how you're supposed to play the game. Um, but, you know, looking at more like skilled stuff, especially some of the stuff that I do, Von Miller is, a, is another one. Okay. Um, okay. Just his dip and how he, he gets under guys um, is different. It's real different, and uh, I feel like I have that, I have that uh, ability to do that. And uh, yeah, so uh, I look at kind of those two guys, and another guy that I actually uh, had just started looking at, I really, really like that I didn't even know was this good. Well, I knew he was good, but I didn't know he was like this. Robin Mathis. Yes. Bro, strip sack king. Shout out to Alabama A&M. Yes. He's an Alabama A&M yeah. Bulldog and a Hall of Famer, man. Yes. So. Y'all didn't think I, y'all thought I just covered Jackson State. See, I'm a, I'm a HBCU guy, man. Y'all know what it is, but great comparison, bro. That, a matter of fact, that's one of the names I mentioned when we kind of got to where we were. Because this is why I want to, I want to kind of pull it into the JSU uh, side of it. Because we're watching Coach Prime documentary, you know, season two. I think it was like episode three. Because I did, Zoe and I sat down with uh, Pride of Detroit. Okay. Because they wanted to get uh, to yeah, know yeah, you. I saw, yeah, 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 I saw that. was So, great. so uh-huh. we're talking about it, and then... When we see you commit to Jackson State, you know, grad transfer, one-year eligibility, we're thinking, wow, linebacker depth, right? And I'm like, man, James Houston, uh, this kid's going to be great. You know, we got Keontae, we got Aubrey Miller, and we're like, okay, we're just going to have depth. They look like they all play the same position. Like, how are we going to figure this piece out? We don't get to see, because when we see you hit the field, you're, on the ed- you're off the edge. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> we don't know what – but then when we go back at the end of the season – we're able to see kind of people under the tent, the interaction. 
and how, kind of how you felt about it. Yeah. Right? So I gotta, I gotta ask that question. I gotta get your thoughts on it because now when you look, when you fast forward, you like, how monumental was that switch? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Play your whole life playing linebacker. You switch one year, have a crazy year, then you get drafted by the Detroit Lions, and everything we just talked about. Boom. Let's talk about that interaction and how you felt about it yeah. then versus how you feel about it now. And that's what I say. Like, my whole career has just been some crazy storybook. You know what I'm saying? Just like crazy, man. And um, I feel like every experience like has just shaped like who I'm supposed to be. Mm. You know, and um, that was something that I really had to, that experience was something like, I, it changed like my whole perspective of the game just because I had kind of just thought like, this is who I am, this is what I'm finna come in here and do, and I just gotta do it to the best of my ability and, and to, to get drafted. Mm. And um, you know, coming in, it was tough. Um, they had their guys, you know, they had right. both of them guys and uh, they was trying to work me in, but it just wasn't working the way that they wanted to. And um, I could feel it, they could feel it. And uh, that's, what, that's what probably prompted the, the change. And um, they saw me blitz a, cup a little bit. And, and uh, I mean, that's probably the best thing I'm good at uh, is blitzing. I, I can get into little nooks and crannies of the holes and I come with speed. And uh, so they decided, you know, let's put them on the edge. And um, that was, this is really during camp. You know, I didn't, I really, going into that first game, I didn't even start, <laughs> you know. So uh, switched my position there. And uh, obviously there was pushback initially. I was like, man, y'all tripping. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Like, <laughs> I don't know what y'all thought this was, but this ain't it. And um, right, right. <laughs> eventually I was just like, man, you either gonna quit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or you gonna do what they say, you gonna keep playing football, the game that you love. Right. And um, I had already been through so much, man. It was like, I'm not trying to get this game up for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I know I could play. I know I could be on that field really wherever. Yeah. This is just middle linebackers where I wanted to play. And um, really that whole thing, that happened like week four, that little video. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm thinking it was prior to yeah, the season. Yeah, no, it okay. wasn't even before the season. I was okay. really like week four. Um, I had been doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? I had stayed quiet. I really wasn't saying too much. I was just going out there and just trying to do exactly what they told me. Mm -hmm. um, I guess they wanted to reward me in some sense and yeah. uh, so they kind of, they, they gave me a package while I was at middle linebacker. And it was all three of us, me, Aubrey, and uh, Hemp back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And um, I had a lot of control of, you know, what was going on in the defense. And uh, I was basically just kind of blitzing. I was blitzing, go. picking my holes, slanting the line somewhere, and I'm picking a hole. I had a two-way go. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say every coach didn't like it, but a particular coach didn't like it. Um, he wanted me off the edge. That's it. And so, uh, yeah, we eventually, we had to meet him. And uh, he sat me down. And uh, he just kind of explained to me, man, like, I really believe you can make a lot of money here. And um, I don't, I don't want to see you go back to middle linebacker just because I feel like this is, this is something that is going to be for you. And uh, it's something that you do need to work at because when you get to the league, it's not going to be that easy. You know, um, it was a, it's a premier position. He was just trying to explain. He brought in, you know, guys to come in and talk to me about this. Wow. Like, wow. bro, like. What you have is special. You have a special ability to get to the quarterback from the edge, and you will be wasting your talents going back to, in, to middle linebacker. Uh, you will be wasting millions, you know? Mm. And um, it took me about a week to really, really accept it. Like, okay, like, this is, might be my new position. And um, eventually I, I, I just completely bought in. I got I was with Coach Trevor and Coach Thurman and Coach Weeks almost every day after practice, just sitting there, talking to them, chopping it up, figuring out what I need to do, how I need to get better. Um, and uh, they was really instrumental for me just because they didn't they didn't try to control me too much. They knew I was very raw. Yeah. And uh, they was just like, man, go out there and play. Go out there and play. We're going to give you a little technical, the little small technical things that you could hone in on. But other than that, man, go in and play. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a lot of freedom on the field as well to do a lot of different things. Um, I was allowed to, you know, go inside almost any time that I wanted to. Right. And so um, it was helpful for me because I didn't really have too much experience, you know, playing like ball really like yeah. I played you know for three four years at Florida but I didn't play I never played a whole game like that you know what I'm saying and um even in high school like I played one year in high school junior year that's wow. really it wow. and so um <laughs> I didn't really have too much experience and getting to Jackson and playing every down every game that was exactly what I needed and um I feel like it really helped me especially going to a new position it helped me understand the position more it helped me just be comfortable wow 
I mean, that's a lot of insight. I mean, do you, I think when you, when you think about it, one of the things that came in mind is, uh, cause we know, you know, shout out to coach prime came to Jackson, uh, really, you know, changed the game for us in a short period of time. It's so off to Colorado, but one of the coaches that you mentioned, coach weeks, yep. still, still on staff, man. Yep. I wanted to get your perspective on just so for Tiger Nation that doesn't really understand it, you was in that locker room, kind of what type of coach is remaining as a, you know, with the JSU Tiger family. Oh, coach he is. man, uh, he knows a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been coaching for a very long time. Um, he a little rough around the edges. <laughs> he a little rough around the edges, man, yeah, but yeah. he a cool cat, though. He actually is a real cool cat. Um, he loves the players, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he really love seeing people develop and that's something of a great coach if right. you want to see people develop and like not just be who you think they're going to be make them more than what you think they're going to be mm -hmm. and uh he's really that type of coach and um nah it was it was it was a long year with him you know because he gonna be on your ear you know what i'm saying he not like a he not like nice you know <laughs> he's not very nice he, he's right. up on you you know what i'm saying he up on you he's trying to make sure you you doing what you're supposed to do and so um he kept me very level-headed he kept me right at the right temperature that i needed to be at without having to you know what i'm saying go off the rails or anything like that he he kept me level-headed as, as, as well as trevor man both of those guys they they really helped me a lot so I'm pretty sure you get this question a lot. Um, two more coaching questions I have. Uh, the first one is, how was it playing for Coach Prime? Everybody always asks me this question. Yeah, gotta ask you. Gotta ask you. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was great. Um, you know, he obviously had his little his uh, his surgery and stuff like that, so he right. missed a lot of time with the team. But he was always involved. You know, calling or being on video call or. He called me a couple times, you know, and cussed mm -hmm. me out or whatever. Not cussed me out, but you know, <laughs> talked to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> but um, no, nah, it was great, man. Like I say, he's he's one of the greatest motivators I've ever been around. Um, you know, he start every day with a prayer. Yeah. Um, he always reading scriptures. Uh, what was really different to me about in the team meetings, it wasn't like he was speaking to us. He was talking to us. He would ask us questions. How was y'all day? What y'all do this weekend, man? What's going on, like? Yeah. Making sure everybody was good. What's going on on campus? Nah, man, y'all can't, don't be going over there. Don't be doing that, you know what I'm saying? So, so. And he was just a real guy. And I felt like he was just, he wanted everybody just to, to have a good experience and, and just be better, yeah. be better. And um, it was great. I had a great year with him. I wish I could have spent more time with him. Unfortunately, you know, he was hurt. But um, nah, great guy, great guy. Um, I hope he does great things wherever he goes. So, you know, out goes Coach Prime. Elevation to Coach T.C. Taylor, yeah. who's a JSU alum, a former JSU football Tiger. Um, I know he's on the offensive side, you on the defensive side, but still being a part of that team with Coach uh, T.C. on the staff. In your own words, um, any of the time you've spent with Coach T.C., kind of your thoughts on the decision for Jackson State to move forward with Coach T.C., your thoughts yeah. on that? Real guy, um, yeah. Jackson guy, <laughs> real <laughs> Jackson guy. Yeah. Um, love TC, man. Uh, he will always come in my ear yeah. and just very mellow, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. I see you, man. And when I was, when I was, you know, going off the rails a little bit, you know, hey, bro, chill out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, when you get to that league, it's not going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it was just little stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, and it helped. I ain't going to lie. It was stuff that I remembered. And it was like, okay, cool. Like, and he was just very a calm, a calm guy very level-headed and just always, always seen the goal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Always seen the goal and just didn't want anybody to miss out on that or, or forget about what we was really in it for. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to what he do with uh, this new Jackson State team, bringing in, ushering a new, a whole new generation, a whole new, Absolutely. A whole new energy uh, yeah, of Jackson yeah. State. And yeah. Um, we're excited. Now, yeah, I'm really excited about what, yeah. what he can do, what he can bring in and, and, and really change this narrative. So, you know, as we get ready to close this out, a um, couple of things that's left that I had on my mind that I'm pretty sure others would, would want to know is what's next for you? Like, um, we know p preparation for the next year, but like what's next for you kind of in this off season uh, from a um, team standpoint? Do you see uh, Detroit expanding? Do you see maybe a contract extension? Like kind of your hopes on that? And then I'll, I'll, I'll close with one final question after that. Yeah, so um, 
I got drafted, but uh, obviously I got cut. And so uh, I had to sign a new deal. So I'm really only on a two-year deal right now. Okay. Um, so I'm really hoping to stay in Detroit as long as I can. Obviously, okay. um, I've built a rapport with some of these guys, some of the coaches, mm -hmm. and um, I want to continue to build on that. You know, I want to uh, – I know I'm not like a typical player, so – it may be hard for me to go somewhere else, you know, and just automatically fit in. They might have to make it to where I do fit in. And so I want to be in Detroit as long as I can. Um, love Detroit. And, um, I mean, if they give me a contract extension, whatever it is, whatever it is, um, I'm very open. I just know what I got to do next year. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's time. You know, it's time. Hey, I had to ask that one because everybody's trying to find a James Houston jersey. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the hardest jersey in the world to find. <laughs> You know, I had to, you know, I wanted to connect with my brother Craig Thomas, uh, Jersey Wave. He, you know, he can make some jerseys or whatnot. But I reached out to you. I'm like, you go online, and I think the only thing was three X's. Yes. I don't want to have to expand to get that. Right. But then we, you even mentioned a possible, possible uh, number change. Possible so number change. we ain't going to say what number it is, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see on that. But one last thing I have for you, and um, right now, your opportunity to speak to the city of Jackson, to speak to Tiger Nation. You know, what's that message to, to Tiger Nation? Man, I love y'all. Keep going. Keep pushing, man. Keep pushing. This HBCU thing is not done. It don't, and it don't end with one person. It don't start with one person. It's everybody. It's the whole group. So um, let's just keep going, man. Let's keep going. Jackson State, you know, we, we the number one HBCU right now. So yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we got we to gotta be the leader. We got to be the leader and take, take the, uh, the Rams by its horns. And... Um, I'm right there with you. I'm supporting y'all, man. I love y'all. I can't wait to get back to Jackson and, and celebrate with y'all, see another homecoming or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, I, I love every second of it. Um, I love all the support that y'all give me, man. It's Sometimes it's overwhelming, but you know, I love it, man. I love it. I love it so much because y'all keep me pushing. Y'all keep me motivated. Um, so thank you, Jackson State. Love y'all. 1400. There it is. Hey, y'all know what it is, man. Um, Y'all know who I am, Ken Clark, 1400, Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club, KC 1400 Media, Go JSU Tigers. Y'all know who this man is, James, bro, love, man. Love. Appreciate you for sitting down yes, with me. That was you. awesome, man. Uh, once we get this out, we'll basically, we'll definitely tag James, and we're going we gonna to continue this series of uh, where is our JSU Tigers at now? Again, as always, Go Tigers, D-I-Love, baby.